Hello and welcome to Business Incorporated. I am BC Adipayo. Coming up today, Atlas Mara exits two African markets as it enters debt talks with Kenya's KCB Group. Zambia inflation touches four-year high at 17.4% in November. Plus, South African government and stakeholders sign Sugar Industry Master Plan. Well, let's get the show started right away with intraday numbers from major markets with track in Africa and Nigeria. And all share index is up 0.31% at intraday. In South Africa, the GSC index was 0.19% positive. Meanwhile, the EGX30 in Egypt was 0.85% in the red. Kenyan burrs closed 0.66% positive on Wednesday. And in the Middle East, the markets were mostly negative, except the Dubai index, which was up 0.28% at intraday, while the Abu Dhabi index dropped 0.34%. It's a similar sentiment that we see in Qatar, as the index was 0.14% negative, while the Saudi index was also down 0.24%. And European stocks are trading around the flat line today as investors pause for breath after a global rally in recent sessions. Investors are also reacting to news of COVID restrictions in Germany. Ashutosh Pandey joins us now for details. Good afternoon, Ashutosh. But Germany has extended coronavirus restrictions to December the 20th. What more can you tell us about this? Uh, that's right, yes, the, uh, the restrictions have been extended till uh, December 20th uh, and could be probably even extended beyond that depending on what the situation is. But there is a, a window of Christmas where the restrictions would be eased. Uh, uh, for now, the ongoing restrictions continue. The restaurants, the cafes, uh, the bars, the theatres are going to remain shut. Uh, the stores are going to remain open, but with restricted number of people who can be in a particular given uh, point of time in that particular store so that's going to be a new addition where the restrictions have actually been even increased is uh, uh, the households where now uh, earlier one household could meet people from another household and the numbers could be around 10 when the both are meeting excluding the kids now it has been reduced to five uh, and uh, and and masks have masks have been actually uh, uh, used of masks have actually been increased uh, you've got to wear it in public places and and uh, try maintaining social distance uh, and that's the be the message but the idea is that there is going to be some sort of an exception made during Christmas so that people can actually celebrate their holidays uh, with uh, their family and the loved ones uh, 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 Chancellor Merkel did acknowledge that the cases have actually peaked it out a little, uh, but still they are very high for to be comfortable. The infection rates are still uh, 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 very high, and that that is actually putting a lot of pressure on uh, the healthcare facilities in the country. Even just yesterday, the Germany witnessed its highest uh, death rate, uh, death ever, uh, uh, da daily deaths ever, uh, about 400. That was so. Yes, uh, for now the restrictions are going to continue. But how are the markets actually reacting to this? So basically, uh, the markets have been uh, in the red. Uh, the DAX behind me, if you see, it's crawling right at the bottom there. Uh, that's because, yes, the sentiments have de definitely turned negative. There is a lot of uh, caution now uh, about how the second wave is going to impact the economy. Uh, remember, we were talking earlier this week where people were actually looking uh, ahead, uh, thinking that now with the vaccines coming in, uh, the economic recovery could finally uh, kick in uh, as soon as the first quarter or the second quarter next year but now right now they're thinking much closer uh, uh, than that is to say this uh, ongoing quarter uh, consumer confidence is down business confidence is down uh, the exporters are worried because uh, these are their uh, key markets uh, in other European countries uh, and and many of the automakers are the top losers uh, today on DAX and that's precisely because uh, of the worries regarding the economic impact of all the uh, this, the second wave and the restrictions that have been put in place. So finally, Ashutosh, we've seen Bitcoin plunge today. Is the cryptocurrency's volatile nature coming back to hunt investors? 
Oh, it's very difficult to say again, like we discussed yesterday also. For now, it seems that uh, there is a lot of profit booking that is taking place. Uh, the, the investors are uh, eager to make some money there uh, because, uh, and it's not unusual to see some sort of a correction when you're trying, when you're about to reach a milestone, a record high was in sight before uh, uh, Bitcoin fell. And the other, other cryptocurrency is also not faring that well. Another reason perhaps is because uh, there are rumors about uh, the U.S. perhaps tightening the rules that govern uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, and and that could be a negative factor as far as cryptocurrencies are concerned. But uh, but having said that, uh, the the Bitcoin fans do like uh, would like to believe that uh, this is just one-off correction, and and that uh, going ahead, uh, uh, Bitcoin is going to reach a record high eventually uh, uh, in the months to come. Uh, they point to how uh, there has been uh, more uh, acceptability of digital coins. Uh, there is uh, e Bitcoin per in particular has been now g getting a lot of attention from uh, institutional investors. That's been a positive. Uh, then uh, companies like PayPal, they have allowed Bitcoin to be used by their customers. Uh, so these are the positives that they tout. And, and, and the fact that there's some institutional investors are the ones who actually uh, were part of the rally for the longest time. And it's only towards the end that the retail investors came in. So that gives them some confidence that perhaps uh, this rally has more steam uh, left in it. All right, Ashutosh, thank you. We'll see you again tomorrow. All right, now let's cross to the UK where most of England is expected to be placed in the two toughest tiers of coronavirus restrictions when the national lockdown ends next Wednesday. Juliana Olainka will be telling us more about this. Good afternoon, Juliana. So Health Secretary Matt Hancock is set to brief the House of Commons on areas in the country that will be placed into tiers two or three coronavirus lockdown rules and restrictions. How will this decision affect uh, restrictions on hospitality? Massively, it's a major uh, talking point here in the UK, especially because we are just uh, weeks away from Christmas, which is supposed to be uh, the most lucrative time in the year for the hospitality sector as well as retail. Matt Hancock, the House Secretary, as you just said, is still uh, wrapping up his briefing in front of lawmakers at the dispatch box in the House of Commons. And uh, no surprises, uh, London, um, the capital city, has been placed into Tier 2 alongside Liverpool, uh, Manchester, Birmingham, Great swathes of regions across the north of England have been put into tier three. And I cannot emphasize enough just how crippling and controversial uh, these announcements made today are going to be for the sector. Uh, bearing in mind uh, before England went into this second national lockdown so many uh, parts um, and regions of the north of England were already in these tiered restrictions. Uh, we were having running commentary, uh, debates, um, arguments between local mayors in the northern regions as, and um, Westminster uh, cabinet members about whether there was scientific proof uh, to, f to back these findings. And uh, the fact that the government was so late going into lockdown, SAGE, the, go the government's own scientific uh, committee, um, advised Boris Johnson three weeks before he decided to go into lockdown, to go into a short circuit breaker. He refused to do so, put all these regions into lockdown restrictions, did a massive U-turn and decided to put England into lockdown. But the question is, it, clearly it hasn't worked. It's supposed to work uh, by coming out of lockdown and there being a reduction in the number of COVID cases. That isn't the case. Um, so there are going to be lots of tears and lots of fears as uh, thousands upon thousands of hospitality business will not be op able to open their doors at a time when you would expect people to be congregating with loved ones, with colleagues during the Christmas period, going for a shop and then going for a bite to eat. Uh, so just to emphasise, um, although the information is coming in thick and fast, he is still speaking, a tier three restriction in um, the UK does mean there can be no household mixing. You must stay at home where you can and hospitality is takeaway only. For many people, that means they are still going to be in a lockdown. So expect uh, some rather audacious comments to come through uh, Britain over the next 24 hours.
Well, then, government scientists have also warned that if there's a relaxation of coronavirus restrictions over Christmas, it could lead to a third wave of the pandemic. Uh, it appears that it's already looking like a gloomy Christmas in the UK, isn't it? Well, um, uh, yes, I suppose. Um, gloomy for some, not gloomy um, uh, for others. But in a whole, people are really confused, unhappy. I think now um, the discussion is going to be um, even more intense because of these new tiered restrictions. But you're right, as soon as it was announced earlier this week uh, that we would have five days of relaxation um, over the Christmas periods, scientists were up in arms. In fact, um, even some members of the public were saying they were pretty much fine staying at home with their immediate family and not having to see uh, their extended family. People do want to see the details. They want to see the data. Again, going back to uh, Matt Hancock, the health secretary's announcement in the Commons just moments ago, there are going to be um, hospitality sector business owners that are asking why the government would allow them to suffer so much to stay into a lockdown and then five days before Christmas allow things to open again. Um, just to remind our viewers, so between the 23rd and the 27th of December, across the entire United Kingdom, which is Northern Ireland, Wales, England and Scotland, um, three household groups of any size, um, so it doesn't matter if you have seven members or eight members in your family, you can mix with two other households under one roof to celebrate Christmas. Now, one of the main reasons why scientists are concerned is we are in the peak of the second wave. Um, I believe by 9 a.m. Uh, yesterday morning, 608 people had died in the previous 24 hours of COVID. There were a further 11,300 positive cases. We are very much in the peak of um, the second wave. There are suggestions that there could be a third wave of this. But because we're coming out of a national lockdown and the numbers haven't decreased and we're going back into tiered restrictions, Restrictions, there are questions as to whether or not this five days relaxation period is even worth it. We actually need questions to those answers now. But how are the numbers doing at intro day, especially with all of these? Not great at intraday. Investors have been keeping all of their eyes on what's happening in uh, Westminster. Uh, the fact that the capital city, London, is going into a tier two restriction is of major concern to investors, and that's reflected um, in the markets. The all share is down 0.52%. The FTSE 100 is down by 0.30%. The FTSE 250 is down by 0.45%. In currencies, pound is also down on the US dollar by 0.20%, down on the euro by 0.26%, and down on the Japanese yen by 0.3%. 36%. Also worth mentioning that one of the biggest draggers on the FTSE is the hospitality and the pub sector, who of course have been completely crippled economically uh, by these uh, long-lasting restrictions, Bissy. Thank you, Juliana. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. And stocks in Asia battle for guidance on Thursday as investors refer to minutes reported from the U.S. Federal Reserve's November meeting on the day mainline Chinese stocks were mixed, with the Shanghai Composite up 0.22% to about 3,369.73, uh, while the Shenzhen dropped 0.41% to around 13,599.99. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index closed trading 0.56% higher at 26,819.45. And stocks in Japan closed higher. We saw the Nikkei 225 up 0.9% uh, trading at 26,537.3. While the Topix Index was also up 0.6% to 1,788.25. And in, uh, in South Korea, the Cuspi closed at 2,625.9 and advanced 0.94%. Meanwhile, Australia's S&P ASX 200 slipped 0.7%, closing at 6,336 .4. We'll be talking about the latest developments coming from the crude oil markets when we return in just a moment. Do stay with us.
Welcome back. Crude oil prices are up for a fifth day today as a surprise drop in crude inventories extended a rally driven by hopes that vaccines will end the coronavirus pandemic and revive fuel demand. Brent was up 0.4% at $48.81 a barrel, while WTI crude was up 0.3% at $45.85 in early trade. Now, both benchmarks have risen about 9% this week, getting a boost after AstraZeneca said on Monday that its COVID-19 vaccine could be up to 90% effective, adding to the potential armory to end the worst pandemic in a century. Well, let's talk more about the recent developments at the crude oil markets with a research analyst at the financial derivatives company, Tobiloba Ogupolo. Good afternoon, Tobiloba. Thank you for joining us on the program. Well, let's start with this one. Uh, ExxonMobil yesterday lowered its long-term outlook for oil prices by 11 to 17 percent due to the uh, lingering effects of the coronavirus pandemic, of course. But what do you think will happen to oil prices based on this pessimistic view? So yeah, oil prices are currently trading above $48 per barrel, like you rightly said. And this bullish trend is as a result of the oil market. And the oil market is, um, this is due to um, the, the fact that there are signs that the COVID vaccines could be rolled out soon. And this led to expectations of a swift recovery in the for energy demand. Then this coupled with the fact that there's stronger demand in China and also um, India. Then there's also the drawdown of U.S. crude inventories and also the weaker dollar. So all of this has really like um, been positive for oil prices. Then ExxonMobil also, despite the um, um, optimistic views of um, a lot of um, investors, Ex ExxonMobil is projecting a fall in um, oil prices by about 11 to 17 percent. And this is for the long term. And if you calculate this, this brings oil down to about 42 to 43 dollar per barrel. And their focus is because they expect the fallout of the pandemic to linger for a very long time. And also they, they, they know that there, there would soon be increased competition between renewable energy and also um, the use of electric electric cars and also there, there might also be prospect of increased um, climate change regulations in the coming term. So all these were um, the, the, the things that ExxonMobil saw and they said that their projections for um, the long term is going to be, um, they're going to bring it down to about, by about 11 percent, 11 to 17 percent. So all this is for the long term and we we also share with this view. I, I believe that oil prices would, um, for, for, for the short term, we will see oil prices start to, to, to increase further. We might also, we, and a lot of people would, uh, are also expecting oil prices to increase further because the, there's the OPEC meeting in like few days. So all these things are driving the market. But in the long in the long term, we expect oil prices to stay around 42 to $43 per barrel. Yeah, you just talked about the OPEC meeting now, which is actually scheduled for December the 1st to uh, determine the future of oil production quota for member countries. Now, you know that Nigeria's current quota is 1.43 million barrels per day and uh, it produced 1.49 million barrels per day in October. Now, the question is, what do you think will happen to the Nigerian economy if the current production cuts are extended or if they are reduced further? Okay, yeah, so OPEC is expected to meet um, December 1 and they, they, would, they would either decide to like cut the current 7.7 .7 million barrels for um, Q1 2021 or, or, or ease the cut by about 2 million barrels per day. And that means that if they ease by 2 million barrels per day, that means a lot of um, countries, producing countries will be asked to like increase their production. And this is not good for prices. So um, a lot of analysts are of the view that um, this... Um, 7.7 million barrels per day cut will be extended, which which is a lot, the view of a lot of people, so that the, the impact of the increased demand would be felt before they, they, they might actually take steps in Q2 2021. So looking at the impact of this, of um, of um, the of reduced, of leaving the rate at, of leaving the cut at 7.7 .7 million barrels per day, we'll see that the, the increase in demand for um, this uh, for oil would would probably increase further and prices will increase and the impact of this on Nigeria is that one we we'll see that uh, we know that um, oil is one of Nigeria's major exports it, it accounts for about 90 percent of um, Nigeria's exports and this means a um, good greater um, export earnings then two we might see that um, FAC allocations might increase because um, because there, there, there's increased proceeds from oil, there, there will also be increased revenue to finance the budget. And th that is on one side. On the other side, there, there's the fact that 
the increase in um in, in the price of um, oil would also mean an increase in pump price. I mean, a lot of um, consumers are already cash strapped. So the fact that if there's an increase in the price of um, oil, the price of pump price, the, the price of um, PS will decrease would, is also something to look at. And um, this is not good for consumers' disposable income. Now, let's broaden the conversation a bit more as we wrap up this conversation. Now, talking about commodity prices in general. Now, what is your outlook for commodity prices in the coming weeks? Okay, yeah, so the price of several commodities have been increasing, and that is due to the positive sentiment. A lot of people are optimistic, really optimistic about the the, um, the vaccine and also the fact that um, the, the vaccine might be dispersed early um, 2021. But a lot of people are not also looking at the fact that there might be distribution challenges. Um, a particular one of the um, one of the pharmaceutical companies that's producing one of the vaccines said it would produce about 1.3 billion um, vaccines and this is not even enough for for, for um, America not not talk of um, the European com com countries and all other people so we, we expect um, the price of for commodities to start to increase because of improved um, sentiment by um, investors but in the long term all this would definitely fizzle out as um, there might be challenges for distributions and we also know that there are increasing cases in Europe so all this we need to factor in so in the short term we might see prices start to increase but in the long to medium term we expect price to just fizzle out and just um, start to decline maybe later research analyst at the FDC Tobiloba Ogupolo thank you for your time In other news now, Atlas Myra Limited has agreed to sell 62.06% of its Rwandan and Tanzanian operations to Kenya's biggest bank, KCB Group. A statement from the Nairobi-based lender, KCB, says the deal is part of the London-listed Atlas Myra strategy of powering back on its African foray after former Barclays PLC CEO Bob Diamond misjudged competition on the continent and paid too much for acquisitions. KCB Group has agreed to pay 1.09 times book value for Bank Populaire de Rwanda and 0.42 times for African Banking Corp Tanzania Limited. Now, if the deal with KCB is successful, Atlas Farah will be left with operations in Nigeria, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia and Mozambique. We're just heading out to Zambia where inflation quickened for the third straight month in November to a four-year high driven by food and non-food items. Consumer prices rose 17.4% compared with 16% in October, just as costs increased 2.2% also in the same period. Annual food inflation accelerated to 16.8% in November from 14.6% a month earlier, and non-food prices rose 18.2%. Price growth has exceeded the central bank's target band of 6% to 8% for 19 months, and is forecast to remain above the range for the next two years. Meantime, Fitch Ratings has got its assessment of Zambia's debt to relative default after missing an extended deadline for a coupon payment in Eurobonds. And as we wrap up, the South African Ministry for Trade, Industry and Competition and the Ministry for Agriculture have put pen to paper to develop the Sugar Industry Master Plan in South Africa. As part of the master plan, industrial users and retailers agreed to a minimum offtake of sugar for a period of three years, with at least 80% of sugar consumption to come from South African farms and millers during the first year, increasing to 95% by 2023. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I'm Bisi Adebayo.